Hello and thanks for joining us on this Friday. I'm Journey Taylor and these are some of the headlines we're following right now at noon. Just one month ago today, parts of Central Arkansas and East Arkansas were destroyed by tornadoes. Today, how one agency is still working to serve the Arkansans impacted. Plus, a rumor online that Florida leads the world in shark attacks is raising the fear factor and making some people rethink vacation plans. At 12:18, we'll separate fact from fiction. Plus, Dolly Parton is releasing some new music and it's not what you expect. The details in our entertainment news just ahead, but first, of course, we want to stop by the weather department. Friday, Friday, in a dry day. Did you not like that, Nathan? <laughs> that was okay. great. I, I, I love was that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be mad at this weather, Nathan. And I'm so happy that you said a dry day. Yes. We had some sunshine out there this morning to begin the day, but we still have some colder air aloft, so the clouds have developed once again. However, it will continue to stay on the dry side, even though those clouds may look a little threatening for the potential of some rain from time to time. Temperatures are into the low to mid 60s. You see that shield of clouds still spilling their way in here from the north. More sunshine down to the south. Take a look at their radar. It's all quiet. It's going to stay quiet through the daytime for the rest of our Friday. However, going into this evening, you see that batch of rain in Oklahoma and Texas that is headed in our direction, and we will see the chance of rain go up for this evening into tonight. Temperatures today topping out into the low to mid 70s across the board with partly sunny to mostly cloudy skies and then going into the weekend. That chance of rain lingers around throughout most of your Saturday, especially in the morning. Drier conditions expected in northwest Arkansas, but here in central Arkansas, you will need that rain gear close by. It could be a wet start to the weekend, but we will dry things out for Sunday. I'll have your complete weekend forecast coming up. Thank you, Nathan. Well, only a month ago, disaster recovery teams arrived in Arkansas to immediately help people impacted by the tornado. Now, one of those agencies was FEMA, but tomorrow one of their disaster recovery centers will close permanently. The BRC at Wildwood Center and Medical Tower will shut its doors for good on Saturday at 6 p.m. and it's all due to low traffic. Public Information Officer with FEMA Thomas Kempton says in the last two weeks, They've only seen 45 people as FEMA works to help survivors all over the nation. Kempton says they want to put personnel in places they are needed, such as Oklahoma, as they were just hit with a deadly tornado. He adds that when working with FEMA, there's something you should know about eligibility letters. People to understand also is that if they get a letter, an eligibility letter from FEMA, no does not necessarily mean no. Often it's a missing piece of paperwork something from your insurance company or something that establishes, you know, that, you, that where your residence was. And so we want to be very careful that people understand to read those eligibility letters very, very carefully. Again, the location in Sherwood is just one of five in the state. So if you're here in central Arkansas and still need assistance, take a look at the screen, take a photo of these locations. Kenton says if you cannot make it to one of these locations, the fastest and easiest way to apply is always online. Now, if you've driven around any of the cities in the path of the tornado, you've probably seen crews still cleaning up debris. The city of Little Rock has hired outside help to get the job done, and even more workers joined them just yesterday. After a bidding process last week, the city selected DRC emergency services for the contract. Yesterday, DRC held an event to recruit local subcontractors. They'll be joining crews working seven days a week in Little Rock. Public Works Director John Honeywell says having DRC here is a huge help. They have anywhere from 30 to 35 large trucks with the knuckle boom uh, type cranes on them where they're able to pick up you know, anywhere from 60 to 80 cubic yards of material each trip. Uh, for us, it would have been a dump truck with, with maybe uh, 10 yards of material. Now the city asks that everyone separate their debris into vegetation and building material piles next to the curb. Sherwood has also hired an outside contractor for cleanup. They'll be picking up piles through this Sunday. So if you live in Sherwood, make sure to get everything out to the side of the road at some point this weekend. The contractor has the same sort of big trucks for bulky debris, but if you miss the Sunday deadline, you'll have to cut everything into smaller pieces for the city to pick up.
Well, now to a THV 11 update. Conway police have arrested two suspects in a gunfight that scared families at softball and t-ball games Monday night. The shooting in the parking lot of the Don Owens Complex Center sent players and parents scrambling for cover. Now, police say Demetrius Ross and Grant Allison are the ones responsible. And this morning or afternoon, they're both behind bars. They're being held without bond in the county jail. The man accused of starting a shooting spree in Little Rock last year, Davis Jones, is now being charged with another death. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office has connected him to the death of Dwayne Thompson. Jones was arrested for his alleged involvement in close to 20 separate shootings last August. Three people, including Thompson, died in that spree and several others were hurt. Jones now faces another capital murder charge and is currently being held without bond. Former President Trump's repeated efforts to stop his former Vice President Mike Pence from testifying before the special counsel investigating him failed this week. On Wednesday, an appeals court denied his final legal challenge, and the very next day, Pence was sworn in before a grand jury. William James Emmon has more details from Washington, D.C. Former Vice President Mike Pence left a D.C. courthouse after testifying before a federal grand jury for more than seven hours. Pence's testimony is part of special counsel Jack Smith's investigation into efforts by former President Trump to overturn the 2020 election. There may be no better star witness for the special counsel than uh, President Trump's own vice president. Former President Trump pushed Pence to stop Congress from certifying the election even doing so publicly during the rally on January 6th. If Mike Pence does the right thing, we win the election. But Pence may have witnessed other efforts by Trump to stay in the White House. What the president said, what he told the vice president to do, what the vice president saw, what he heard the president telling others, what, if any, plans the president shared with him or with others. Pence's appearance before the grand jury could be a sign that the special counsel is moving closer to a decision about whether to indict the former president. Trump told a crowd in New Hampshire Thursday that the investigations into him only help. The harder they hit, the better we do. Pence is considering running for president in 2024. Hello, Iowa. Potentially pitting himself against his former boss. Willie James Inman, CBS News, Washington. Former President Trump was asked about Pence's testimony following a rally in New Hampshire last night, and he replied that he doesn't know what Pence said, but he has a lot of confidence in him. Meanwhile, writer E. Jean Carroll faced cross-examination from an attorney for former President Trump on Thursday. Carroll accuses Trump of raping her in a New York department store in the spring of 1996. She also claims that the former president defamed her when she went public with the story years later. Trump's attorney brought up an email between Carol and a friend arguing it is evidence that Carol was scheming against the former president. The trial is expected to continue next week. The second round of the NFL draft is set for tonight and we could see a Razorback get called up. Drew Sanders has a chance of going tonight and we'll keep you updated if it happens. And last night, the Carolina Panthers chose Alabama quarterback Bryce Young with the first overall pick of this year's NFL draft. The Houston Texans chose Ohio State quarterback CJ Stroud second overall, then surprisingly traded up for the very next pick where they went to the other side of the ball and grabbed Alabama linebacker Will Anderson Jr. Well, headlines proclaim that Florida is the world leader in shark attacks, but experts say there's more to the claims than reports say. Well, we're breaking it all down in about eight minutes, but first let's take a look at weather, Nathan. It's a dry Friday journey, but it won't stay that way. Unfortunately, going to the weekend, rain returns and the rain could be heavy at times on your Saturday. However, Sunday looks much better. That forecast coming up.